Hey class, um, in this podcast, I want to talk about the Rickenau order or the severity order. Uh, it's dated October uh, 1941. Uh, I meant to talk about it in class, but um, we've had very, very good discussions about other readings. Uh, um, so we, we haven't gotten to it, but it it is worth talking about. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to uh, in this uh, probably two podcasts. So. First of all, um, Rickenau was uh, an old line German officer. Um, he had fought uh, in World War uh, One with great distinction. Um, so he's someone that has been part of the German army, the Wehrmacht, far before Hitler arrived uh, onto the scene. And he had fought very, very successfully. And once Hitler comes into power, um, Rickenau embraces Nazism with great enthusiasm, but he wasn't one of the people that uh, uh, set Hitler up to to um, to take power. He's just someone that accepts Hitler and, and then more than accepts Hitler, um, decides that he's going to work very closely with Hitler um, and do whatever Hitler wants him to do. Now, the significance of the severity order is it speaks to the complicity of the German army and the atrocities, uh, at least a portion or a good portion of the atrocities that occurred um, in the Soviet Union, in Poland, in other areas of Europe during World War II. After the war, uh, the German officers that were captured, they said, hey, we were just doing our job. Hitler was a madman. Um, we're professional soldiers. Professional soldiers do what they're told to do. This is true in the U.S., in England, in the Soviet Union. And uh, you can't pin uh, any aspect of the Holocaust on us. Any uh, aspect of the, the, barbaric, the, the barbarous activities uh, that uh, Hitler was involved in and ordered. Uh, the, the German army, the commander said, no, our hands are clean. Uh, we kept separate from the worst of Hitler's excesses. Well, it, it turns out that that's really not true at all. And this this memo or this order to troops is kind of smoking gun evidence about how deeply the Wehrmacht was the, the German army, how deeply they had uh, involved themselves in Hitler's master race ideology by October of 1941. So just to set the context again, October 1941, the Germans had invaded the Soviet Union in three army groups, Army Group North, Army Group Center, and Army Group South uh, in June of 1941, North heading towards Leningrad, Center heading towards Moscow, and Army Group South um, um, uh, in the Ukraine, uh, that area of the Soviet Union. And by October, things weren't going well. The German army uh, wasn't being defeated there. In fact, the German army, the closest they came to defeating the Soviets probably was the next summer of 1942, once the, the winter ended and German uh, offensive operations started again in 1942. They came very, very close to defeating the Soviet Union. But what's happened is the German offensive has stalled. Uh, in, in around Leningrad, there's a siege of well over a million um, Soviet citizens uh, are, are starved to death, are starved to death in the siege. Once again, um, we see starvation uh, as a weapon. Uh, it started with Stalin. Now we're seeing the Nazis use it. Uh, the German army runs into a stone wall in Moscow in December of uh, 1941. Um, reserves from uh, the uh, Siberia uh, are rushed to Moscow and push the German army back 150 miles from Moscow. Uh, but they'll live to fight again. And in the south, the, the German army has made great strides, um, but it, it, it's not clear what it's going to do next. Um, and that's where uh, Rickenau, that's where he was, he, he commanded the German army, Army Group South. Uh, that, that was his uh, overall command. So just to, again, just to set the stage, the Germans thought that they would kick in the door, as Hitler said. Uh, they'll kick in the door 
of the Soviet Union and the whole uh, edifice would smash. Well, it turned out that rhetoric um, uh, didn't match reality. Uh, the Germans came in, they, they took millions of prisoners, they, they threw the Soviets back, uh, they marched almost to the gates of Moscow or to the gates of Moscow. But the Soviet Union, much to the surprise of uh, the Germans, did not collapse. Uh, they faced an enemy that was over two and a half size, uh, two and a half times its population. And you might remember from an earlier podcast, Halder, who was one of the top German generals, in July, he's writing, the war's over. We've, we've defeated the Soviet Union. The very next month, the very next month in August 1941, He's saying we have underestimated the colossus that is the Soviet Union. I think that's actually one of the most important lines. And uh, in, in, if you want to understand World War II, that by August, Halder is going, we have underestimated the colossus that is the Soviet Union, not only in terms of population, but in terms of just the huge, the, the sheer size of, of the Soviet Union. And also Stalin is quite ruthless in mobilizing his society to fight the Nazis. Now, one of the things that's gone wrong, especially in the Army Group South area, is that the German army had moved so quickly uh, into areas of Ukraine, into Belarus, that they had left huge pockets uh, behind the front lines that the Germans just didn't have the manpower to control. Um, because you you need most of your troops, troops on the front lines, right, fighting the enemy. And so there were large areas, uh, and I'm going to talk about this in a in a po upcoming podcast, that were behind German front lines, where you had partisan, very effective partisan activity, where um, uh, the members of these nationalities, it was all the Soviet Union, uh, but Ukraine, as we know now, was a different nationality, and the Germans had come in. And they'd been such, you know, they'd been so horrifying. They committed such grotesque and really unthinkable atrocities that a population, <coughs> pardon me, that they actually could have gotten on their side, they alienate. So this is one of the things that Rickenau is, is, is facing in October of 1941 when he writes this order. And uh, I'm going to stop this particular uh podcast here and then uh, take up the order in, uh, in the next podcast. Oh, if, if you're looking on the screen, this is obviously Rickenau and uh, Hitler sometime in, I guess, 1941. Um, I guess just a month before he wrote this order. <clears throat> 